Okay. I will call to order the Borough Council at 7.33 p.m. Mr. Metric, can you call the roll? Sure. Uh, Mr. Weisbord, here. <coughs> Ms. Rickards, here. Ms. Pananopoulos, here. Mr. Nixon, here. Mr. McGreevy, here. Ms. Tevlin Moffitt's currently absent and expected. Um, Mayor Deutsch, here. Uh, Solicitor John Walker, present. And President Aaron Muther, uh, present. Um, <coughs> Councillor Weisbord, could you leave us and meet us in the pledge? to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, looking at the agenda here, I had some comments regarding parking, um, but I am going to hold them until we open the public hearing for parking. Uh, Ms. Mayor, do you have any comments? Just a couple brief ones. Um, uh, I have the uh, incident reports for, uh, for last month. Uh, our traffic enforcement had been up and we had been consistent with that uh, last month as well. Um, we're looking at some additional, in addition to the increased enforcement we've had, I've instructed uh, 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 the police department to actually increase uh, enforcement even further. Because uh, we want to slow down drivers in the in the borough and make sure people stop at stop signs and that everybody is safe while traveling throughout the borough, it's particularly in the downtown district. I said it last month. Um, slow down if someone is attempting to cross the, the crosswalk. Stop, stop, let them go. We want everyone to be safe. Uh, also, in addition, it's springtime. Things are growing. Your hedges are growing over the sidewalks. Please do everybody a favor and cut them back and leave enough uh, space for people with strollers and, and walkers and uh, people, dog walkers and everybody walking to get by without getting all scraped up by your hedges. Also, it helps people who are uh, coming to intersections to be able to see around the curb and uh, check where the traffic's coming. So please, please trim those hedges and make sure uh, everything is taken care of for everybody's safety. Uh, and other than that, I'm going to hand in the uh, police to police report. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Walker, I'll hand it off to you. Would you like to begin the continuance of the public hearing? Yes, at this time we'll adjourn tonight's meeting and we'll turn back into the public hearing on the Narva 2040 Comprehensive Plan. This is a hearing that was commenced on April 17th at the last business meeting, and at that time it was continued on the record until tonight. Uh, May 15, 7.30 for a fall. Um, the purpose of continuing that hearing was to provide uh, for additional opportunity for comment or feedback uh, from the public um, uh, regarding the NARVA 2040 comprehensive plan. At this time, I will turn the hearing back over to Ms. Stops to give us an update on uh, any uh, updates um, since the last hearing. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Mr. Olfo. Um, I'm just passing out here um, a brief summary of the feedback that we've received to date from the public. Since last month's hearing, we received one additional comment through our online form, and uh, I've received no uh, feedback otherwise um, through phone calls or emails or anything like that. So I hope that everyone has had a chance to review it, um, and no additional comments have been received, as I said. Um, so, yeah. Um, so at this time, I don't have anything further to add uh, beyond the presentation that I was uh, that I had given last month. Um, the comments are minor, I would say, and um, otherwise, uh, the planning commission had the most substantive comments um, that we've received to date. And it's my understanding that we didn't receive any feedback from the school district or the Lower Marion Township. Um, MCPC provided a review letter, uh, but that is the, the sum of the feedback that we've received from the public and the adjacent municipalities. Thank you. I'll mark your letter. Uh, this May 15, 2019 summary of public feedback is Board Exhibit 6 for the purposes of this hearing. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak on the issue of the Narva 2040 Comprehensive Plan? Hearing and seeing none, I'll turn it over to Council. Does Council now have any additional questions regarding the Narva 2040 Comprehensive Plan? With that, uh, we will close this continued public hearing.
and we will adjourn back into the public meeting. The comprehensive plan is now in a position to be voted upon by council and is on the agenda for later this evening. We will now adjourn into an additional public hearing, a separate public hearing on Ordinance 1016, which is the ordinance um, that amends Chapter 118, Vehicles and Traffic, Article 3, Privileged Parking of the Narborough Borough Code to establish parking permits for residential invitees and to amend the definitions, permit fee violations, and penalty provisions for uh, residential privileged parking. Um, I will mark a few exhibits. The first is the ordinance itself, Ordinance 1016. Or exhibit two is the proof of advertisement of tonight's hearing, which was uh, published, the legal notice of that hearing published in the Mainline Times on April 28, 2019. Or exhibit three is proof of submission of the proposed ordinance to the Montgomery County Law Library. This is an ordinance that codifies a system, my understanding that's in place in the borough, sort of informally, but it does not have a place in our code. So this isn't something that is being, is taking away anything or, or changing anything in the code. It's, it's an attempt to establish the practice of providing parking permits to what we've classified as residential invitees, uh, which are visitors, invitees, or guests of owners or leases of a residential dwelling. So it doesn't apply to commercial buildings. Um, in the two-hour privileged parking zones that are established um, in the code, and have been established in the code. This ordinance itself does not establish the amount of any sort of fee. It doesn't establish any duration of sort of fee that, that would be imposed. That would be done under a separate resolution, which I believe is under on the agenda for later tonight. Uh, it leaves that open um, for future changes and for future considerations. Um, it does change some definitions to make a little bit clearer of what commercial buildings owners or leases are or what a residential dwelling is uh, to be in line with what our zoning code is today. It does not change the areas that are eligible for the privileged parking. It does not change the current owner or leasee parking requirements. It does not change the hours for the uh, times you're allowed to park or not allowed to park in the, the two-hour parking. Uh, it simply modifies what's previously existing to establish the idea of a residential invitee and the need for those res residential invitees to obtain permits if they don't want to be subject to the two-hour parking requirements. Um, with that, I will turn it over um, first to Council for any questions or comments. No, thank you. All right, hearing seeing none, I'll turn it over to the public for comments and questions. And again, um, if it's regarding discussing durations and lengths of times of these permits, that's something that we could discuss at that uh, at a later time uh, regarding that resolution prior to voting on that resolution. Yes, sir, if you could please state your name and your address for the record. I'm James B. Morley. I live in Leavenwood Side, the access street for the south side. I have a question that says, when did you come up with this? It seems like it's just spear rocking forward rather than allowing all of us a chance to say, wait a second, I've lived here for 48 years. And then all of a sudden we're changing because Narbeth wants to turn into an apartment community, not a re residential community. So the, the apartment issue or the owner issue, the leasey issue, that's not being changed by this ordinance at all. Um, this isn't, so this is, doesn't when take- When did you start this? When did the idea of establishing a residential invitee addition to the privileged parking permit start? Sure. Well, I think the process would have started 10 years ago when the when we were providing permits for yeah. for people who were not owners or leases. Uh, and, I'll, yes. and I'll turn the 15. So, so for 10 to 15 years, people who were visitors to 
the privilet to to the owners of leases in the borough would contact the borough, mm -hmm. ask to be put, put on a list that was maintained by the borough office, and if they were on that list, they were allowed to park in the area that was reserved for owners and leases in the two-hour privileged parking list. That system um, has become untenable to manage based upon moving to the electronic system and due to you know, errors that, that happen when someone's maintaining a long numbered list of license plates, uh, moving on to the electronic system, I believe, and I don't want to speak for borough council and borough administration, but there is desire to codify what has been, quite frankly, a, a unenforceable and unapproved system uh, within the borough. So it's been going on for a very long time. This is just a matter of making it part of the code and establishing a system where there's some accountability uh, and it's not just uh, you know a man in the back room writing your name down on the list. Um, but it, again, it doesn't change what has been going on here. It's just sort of, again, making it part of the code. Uh, um, yes. Carol McLaughlin, 125 Woodside. So, what is the accountability? So, if I have like my cousin who wants to take the train every day, and I sign her up and say oh, she's a visitor, like what's to who's monitoring that? Well, it would take again based upon this ordinance. It would take um, you, I believe, to set up and apply for permits for, again, the durations and the costs of which are okay. not determined here, which is correct. Say I apply for right. a permit. So are you asking if there's... pay $15 or whatever the cost was put out at one point, or we'd have to pay $15 to get a permit. Right. So do you have any idea what costs in the city? Yeah, the so, city? so this ordinance does not go after the attempts of fraud uh, that that anyone okay. could, could try to do. Okay. The question is, what's the, account, what's the accountability? What's the accountability in trying to find out the people who... Well, yeah, so who's, like, who's monitoring the list, yeah, to prevent abuse of parking. Yeah. 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 The, the person applying has to provide <coughs> proof of residency initially. Okay. So right. I guess in your question, if you're willing to vouch for your sister and say that she's your visitor when she's not really your visitor, okay. um, yeah, that would be something that someone would have yeah. to do. So, uh, Kevin McLaughlin, 125 Woodside. So, what would be accomplished by doing this? What is accomplished by doing this? <laughs> exactly. Well, again, it's, it's keeping track of who is on that list uh, and being able to better administer who is on that list. Um, I can't speak for what council wants to do with the durations or the amounts uh, at a later time, but um, it would certainly help uh, with the administration of the parking program, but also, again, add some accountability that you can't just park in a two-hour parking space without going through some steps to show that you have a, that you are a visitor or you otherwise have a right to park. So, so all the devil's going to be in the details of cost, timing, uh, availability, all those kind of things. When, when's that all going to be dealt with so that we can be a part of that discussion? Um, I believe that that's a later discussion um, for, uh, for tonight, uh, but not within this ordinance. This ordinance simply sets up uh, those details to be established through a resolution at a later time. Um, and that resolution is also on the agenda tonight to establish some of those details. And that's done in a way so if there is a need to make changes or make additions, uh, it doesn't need to incur the time and cost of an ordinance. It could be done through a, a resolution of borough council. I'll take an opportunity to sort of speak in a non, I mean, John, you've done an excellent job, yes. but I'll just cut, cut right to it. There was a system in place. We had two hour zones. People had a need to have visitors. The office 15 years ago, longer, put in place, call us, we'll put the name on a list. There was no accountability for, you know, People putting names on lists that shouldn't be there. There was uh, no ability to sort of vet, and it was very difficult to actually kind of go through and cross-check that list with enforcement. That was the status quo that we have had. Our goal, when, when we, we looked into this, and we saw not only was this the status quo, it was not 
codified in the law. It was a back office procedure. And in discussions with the solicitor, in discussions with counsel, and everything we've been trying to do as a counsel for many years is not to have secret, you know, uh, secret administrative functions. It's in the law, it's written down, you can go and you can look at it, you can see the process. This is the first step of bringing that out of the shadows, establishing that this permitting is legal, it exists, and then counsel later this evening will discuss what the fees might be, um, and recognizing it is extremely complicated because you don't want to uh, say, uh, inconvenience your visitors. You don't want to cause great additional expense to your residents, but you do need to protect against people just putting all their friends who take SEPTA on the list and violating the whole purpose of the two-hour zone in the first place. Mm -hmm. That discussion has not yet happened. I expect some of it will happen this evening. And I, this council's and this office's priority is to come up with a parking plan over a period of months, mm -hmm. and these conversations will continue over a period of months. hope that is helpful as well. Yes, in the back. My name is Aileen McGovern. I'm also from Woodside Avenue in Narber. I have lived, we have lived on Woodside Avenue for over 50 years. So I'm very familiar with having to call the borough. I used to call the borough and say, I will have friends here. I would give the information. That was fine. My question now is, I have four adult children. I have no grandchildren to drive. We like to have family gatherings. We have our family gatherings on a Saturday. I watched your video a couple of times. Zone three, Monday through Saturday, the two hour limit would be applied from noon to midnight. That was a separate discussion. That was a discussion during a committee meeting. Yes. That, that changed to the time of when the two hour zone would be enforced. So it will not be on a Saturday. It will not be. Not, it is not tonight. And but I don't know that there are plans to, to do that. Yes. What am I supposed to do with my family if I say, you know what? I can fit two more cars in my driveway. Now, who will pay the parking ticket if we don't have permission? How do we get permission to have a car for that particular day? And I think that's something you really have to consider. So uh, just to, you. to recap, there is no plan to make a change to the hours of enforcement. Saturdays are not currently an hour of enforcement. Yeah, for the two, for the two hours zone, eight to six, they are. So, till six o'clock. Till six o'clock. So, so and they have been. Yeah. Forever, at least 15 years. Yes. And to answer your question, what you've done before is what you continue to do, is to, to call the borough uh, to, to ask that those be put on the list, but also I think there be set up uh, websites so you could do it instantly from your Are you phone. saying you that you're supposed to take a photo of the license plate? Not, none of that has yet been established. Yeah. So that might not happen. We don't. But that is for a discussion. I encourage you to stay. But the public can have input to that. I would encourage you to stay for the rest of this meeting because yeah. once we conclude this, we will move into more detail about what's actually happening. But Thank I'm you. I'm going to follow John's lead here. Look at this the ordinance discussion. Go ahead. Any other questions or comments? Hearing and seeing none, I'll turn it back over to council to see if there, that prompted any additional comments or questions. If not, then uh, we will close uh, the public comment section and we will close this hearing. And this hearing is now, or sorry, this ordinance will now be in a position for council to vote upon. We will adjourn back into the public meeting. All right, thank you. We'll now move to number six, which is public comment. This is public comment on any issue. Um, if you would like to speak, I'll start in the back. I'll move down the last row. Just raise your hand, second row from the rear, second row from the front, front row. Hearing none, we will close public comment. And we will move to action items. 7A, Finance and Administration. Move that the Borough Council approve the minutes of the April 3rd, 2019 workshop meeting and April 17th business meeting of Borough Council. Second. Any discussion on the minutes? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. 7B, Finance and Administration. Move that the Borough Council approve the schedule of bills and the general highway aid and solid waste funds and authorize the Borough Manager to pay all bills. Is there a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 7C. 
We move to Borough Council adopt resolution 2019-012, adopting the Norwood Borough Comprehensive Plan for the attachment. I'll second that. Seconded. Any discussion? No? I just want to thank the committee that did this and Maggie for the hard work. I think it's a tremendous yeah. project. Thank you, Michelle. And thank you on behalf of the steering committee as well, and it was a, a great uh, effort. And I'm looking forward to uh, working with the borough and uh, executing the uh, it truly is comprehensive. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All in favor of adopting the comprehensive plan? Aye. 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 Unanimous. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, <laughs> Let's go a little bit out of order here. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, can we move to F, 7F? Sure. Cindy. Um, motion to approve preliminary plan 203F. Right, just number on paper. Oh. Oh, just, just okay. make a motion. Okay, can I make a motion to approve uh, to approve resolution 2019-014, preliminary plans for 203 Haverford Ave. Is there a second? <laughs> second. Okay. So on the table, um, yes. okay. we have members of the, uh, uh, we have atten attendance from the developer here. Are there any questions for the developer from council members? Okay. All in favor of uh, any discussion amongst ourselves? All in favor of approving the preliminary plan for 203 Haverford, say aye. 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 Any opposed? One in opposition, Mr. Nixon. Thank you. Uh, 7G. Move the Borough Council adopt resolution 2019-015 preliminary plan for approval of 100 forests per the attachment. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any questions for the developer team? I'll have a question. Yes. Um, I believe that uh, there was a conversation at the last meeting about some um, EPA information that should have been sent to us. Mr. Metric, did we ever get that information? We, it was emailed on my way here. Okay, we made the request, and they, mm -hmm. <clears throat> just so everyone knows, the site access agreement that council approved with the uh, with the uh, property owner to locate groundwater and wells in the sidewalk areas and across the street and station square um, <coughs> allows the borough with written requests to the to the applicant owner within seven days to produce any and all information reports and communications to DEP regarding the site characterization report that needs to be completed. Our concern is that whatever remediation measures that need to be done, need to be turned to be done, will be done, and that the site will be developed in a safe manner, and anyone who lives there and, and does business there will likewise be protected. <coughs> you may recall we also entered into an access agreement to allow them to investigate that groundwater. It's a condition of approval that they can continue to comply with that access agreement. Uh, they would have to do that anyways, but again, to tie into the land development. And, uh, we did receive, I believe, from um, the engineer today the phase one and phase two reports uh, promptly from the requests that were provided. Thank you. Thanks for answering the question. Thank you. Um, any other questions to the development team? Any discussion amongst council members? All in favor? I just, I just, there is one. I just have a brief comment. I, I think um, I just wanted to alert council members and the public that Mr. Bressy's letter is very detailed and interesting about the review that they had recently on 100 Forest and 203 mm -hmm. Hatford Avenue at a recent planning commission meeting. And he, and, he, and if, in case you're interested, he outlines in detail the way in which the developer and the architect answered concerns from the public about the look and feel of the buildings and, and the and the architect and the developer were very responsive to those concerns and explained the ways in which they modified the facades um, to, to, to help the buildings fit in more. And I just appreciate that effort. And, uh, and if you're interested in reading about it, it's in Todd Bressy's letter. Okay. Thanks for pointing that out. Thank you. Any other discussion? I'll pause a little longer. All right. All in favor of approving the preliminary plan for 100 Forest Avenue? 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mr. Nixon. And just as a point of reference, the next phase there will be a final plan submission uh, that will have a little bit additional levels of detail that would come before the board uh, on both of these 203 for All right, let's let's keep going and we'll come back to parking. We can cross some things off our list. 7H. Price Crossing. I move that Borough Council approve the attached request for release of escrow funds for Price Crossing land development according to the Borough Engineer letter dated May 7th, 2019. Is there a second? Second. Does anyone have any questions? Can we give a little background? Yeah. yeah. And you know, I just wanted to make a comment from FNA because we talked about uh -huh. one question about yeah. this. GD, you want to give background first? No, I, I, no I'm asking for background. <laughs> Mr. Metric, could you yeah. give us the background on number seven release? Sure, this is the seventh in a series of authorizations prompted by the development team at Price Crossing to release money that has been that was put set aside in a third party bank account to pay for public area improvements on the site should, in the unlikely event that a developer walks away from a project, goes bankrupt, it, it happened a lot 10, 12 years ago, <laughs> <laughs> there would be money available that the borough could put its hands on to complete the public improvements, the streets, the stormwater infrastructure, the landscaping, the street trees, and a few other items. So this is the seventh uh, request, and there will probably be about three, two or three more left to go to release funds from that escrow account because the, um, the developer has, has properly completed the improvements that were indicated on the plan. And, um, and as they check those boxes off, they get to release the dollar values out of that escrow account back to their, however they want to use them. And that's reviewed by the borough engineer prior to that time, is that correct, Mr. Metro? That's correct. And once they get to a substantially complete um, stage of the project where it looks to, 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 to anyone walking by that it's complete, we will still hold, I think it's either 10 or 15% behind in the escrow account to make sure those improvements are durable and they last that 12 or 18 month period, whatever's in the land development agreement. Sometimes soil settles, uh, pavement cracks, curbs crack, stormwater systems need to be repaired, uh, landscaping need, that, that doesn't overwinter needs to be replaced and, and holding on to that escrow account funds for the 12 to 18 month period allows for those sorts of things to be addressed prior to complete dissolution of the account and borrow and developer kind of part ways at that point. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from council members? Not a question, but a quick clarifying comment. So we've received some emails from neighbors in that area pretty upset about the guardrail. Yeah. Yeah. So if you looked at the escrow accounts, there are two line items. One was $2,100 for the guardrail right. and a 30, approximately $39,000 Line item for landscaping fee? No, it was a thousand. It was thirty nine k. Yeah, mm -hmm. for land. I know. Mm -hmm. um, so I asked, <laughs> I asked Sean if there was any discussion or follow up on would some of those landscaping dollars be allocated to the guardrail? And he explained that while there's nothing legally um, that that holds the developer responsible for that, the office is in the midst of conversations explaining the needs, and there was some open discussion about um, some greenage that would kind of soften that landscaping. We're working on it. FYI. Working yeah. on it. Working on it. Yep. And, and uh, optimistic. Um, all right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Say none. Let's go to the uh, roof repair. Seven I. I move the borough council approve the attached bid for the roofing project at 201 Statewide Avenue. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, thank you. And discussion. Sure, can you give some quotes? Yeah, sure. Um, you're probably familiar with this project. It was detailed in last year's facilities and grounds assessment included in our capital improvement plan. And now coming to final, um, you know, the final stages of, of um, implementation. So what council is voting on tonight is a package of specifications and plans to do repairs to the eaves and soffits at the 201 Sabine Avenue campus. That would be a complete rebuild of the entire eave and soffit system, as well as replacement of the roof deck on the, uh, the entire roof deck on the uh, three-story educational building, as well as some resurfacing on other roof surfaces throughout the complex. This is a major project. Um, 
It's going to require a lot of attention to detail. It's going to require a very skilled contractor who has worked on institutional commercial size pro projects and knows what they're doing. And it take, it's going to take a very good project manager to work on the borough's behalf to get this project um, done and, and, and done within budget and done, and done safely and done accurately and done well. And I think we have a good partner in Ed Mangold and KCBA Architects, who was the firm that did our facilities and grounds assessment. They are the firm that uh, worked on the plan and the details and the specifications. This, the package I uploaded to SharePoint for everyone's information is much larger than what you saw in tonight's meeting packet. If you really want to dig in the details, you can do that. Um, should Council approve this uh, motion to um, put the bid out, we would we would start tomorrow getting the information out. It would be posted to our website. It has to be advertised twice in the mainline times. And there will be a bid opening on June 12th. And possibly, if all goes well, by our next business meeting, we might have a, a reasonable bid to bring forth for Council's consideration to, to do the project. What's happening, not related to this motion or action concurrently, is conversations now with our um, <clears throat> Um, financier to see um, what the borough can do in terms of raising the capital to pay for this and we did budget for debt service in 2019 to help pay for what we would borrow to do this project. Mm -hmm. So that's where things stand at this moment and we're looking at a uh, notice to proceed date in July and a substantial completion by uh, October of this year. Questions from council members? Uh, I have two. What's the budgeted amount for the for the restoration of the eaves and soffits on the roof repair? And um, once we receive bids, does the law does the Commonwealth law require that we take the lowest bid? And does it require that we contract the work? It's budgeted. Those are three questions. <laughs> questions. It's budgeted five hundred and fifteen thousand dollars in the capital plan. Okay. Um, council is not obligated to execute any bid it receives. It is obligated, however, to choose the lowest responsible bidder. And if you're going to disqualify a bidder, um, you, you have to have a really good reason. It has to be like an electrician came in and bid on your roof project, and they have, <laughs> they've never done a roof project before. Um, is there anything no, I'm so, missing? No, so you don't have to choose any bids, but if you do choose a bid, it has to be the lowest responsible. And, and we've done that before. For example, with the deck, right? We got our bids, or we put the bio, we got our bids, and we were like, "Well, Nelly, right? It's happened." Mm -hmm. right? so it comes in at million five. We can think of plan with the site. It's that's plan B. Exactly. Yeah. I think that would be a plan B moment for sure. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? And just for, for the public, uh, it says here on the agenda, motion to approve bid for roofing repairs. Right. It should say motion right. to approve bid package, mm -hmm. or advertising of bid package for roofing repairs. We're not approving a bid. We are advertising the requirements so that people can give us their bid. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Aye. Motion passes. All right. Let's go back to 7D. Everyone waited patiently. Sure. This is, I'll take a motion to adopt Ordinance 1016 from Public Safety. Okay. I move that Borough Council adopt Ordinance 1016, amending the Norwood Borough Code, Chapter 118, Vehicles and Traffic, Article 3, uh, Privileged Parking, to establish a permit parking for residential invitees and to amend the definition, permit fee violations, and penalty provisions. Is there a second? I'll second it. All right, there okay. we go. And would we like to have any discussion on 1016, specifically the ordinance, and we'll get to the resolution, which is the next item. I guess I'd like to just say how, it makes, how, how this ordinance makes sense to me. The, the two-hour zones were requested by residents over the years at different times. Because I, I think even as recently as three years ago, yes. the residents of the 200 block of Dudley may have come and asked for mm -hmm. two-hour parking to be put on their block. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the intention of the zones, of the two-hour zones, is to make life easy for the people who live on those streets so that they can park as close to their house as possible so they can carry their groceries inside. And especially this is 
critically important for people who don't have driveways because they don't want to carry the groceries from around the block or be far from their home. So this is a really critical um, ordinance that we have that allows for two-hour parking, that only allows for two-hour parking on people's streets where they can get permits. The police tell us that we're going to we, we don't have an efficient way not to ticket your visitors anymore that's lawful unless you give us an ordinance that allows us to have a, a lawful permit of your visitor's car. Mm -hmm. Now that's kind of what was going on before. It's not really different in practice. It's just different in the law. And I think it makes sense, as Aaron said earlier, to have, you know, to make sure that the laws are fair for everyone. And this, this does that. And so that's why I'm, I'm, that's why I seconded it, because it's not really changing anything that we currently have. And, you know, it just makes it more fair for everyone. So okay. I wanted to share that. Can I ask you a clarification? Yes, Mr. Nixon. Vote? Um, so my understanding is essentially that for a decade or longer, we had a policy where residents could call in and indicate, hi, I'm Joe, I live in a two-hour zone, I'm having a guest, the guest got put on a list, guest didn't give a ticket, get a ticket. Correct. Then we discovered a few months back, whatever, that that, that policy is not proper. So it went back to, if you're two hours and one minute, you're subject to a ticket. And this law, while it doesn't prescribe specifics as to money or time, it gives us the capability as soon as five minutes from now to do something that would allow people the ability to have a guest over, whereas right now they don't, without being subject to a ticket. Is that accurate? I think that is accurate. Yes. Okay, I just wanted to make sure yes. I got it. The mayor, yes. the mayor says the yes, the solicitor That's says yes. That's all I need. Andrew, you said yes. The borough manager says yes. Thank you for that. That right. was clarifying. If I may. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ms. Mayor. Uh, this also came up uh, with the implementation. We have a brand new parking system, um, a, a, software, a software system, and that didn't, uh, we needed to have an ordinance to allow the, our visitors to our homes to stay longer in the two hour zone, we need to have that codified in an ordinance mm -hmm. to allow it to work through the new uh, software yeah. system. So so that's kind of what precipitated uh, the uh, part of this change. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right, all in favor of adopting ordinance 1016. Aye. 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 It's unanimous. All right, now we get to the meat, 7D. A motion to approve a resolution regarding privilege parking. I move the Borough Council adopt resolution 2019-013 privilege parking per the attached. Okay, can we get a second to put this on the table for discussion? I'll second it for discussion. Great, thank you. <laughs> Councilor Rickard seconds. Okay. Um, Ms. Tedlin Moffat, could you tell us what this says as read? So what the, what the ordinance, I'm sure John explained it a little bit, uh, the resolution, my apologies, the resolution would do, uh, could adopt fees uh, for the privileged parking permits, again, in those two-hour zones, um, so that we would, again, the police would know and the administration would know um, who these cars belong to and would make um, an application and a permit um, given and a document would be filled out, or I'm sure there's an app, um, that somebody could use to um, register these cars for uh, a duration of time uh, in the borough. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead, Councilor yeah. Ricketts. Um, so thanks to Michelle, we just had this discussion in FNA because mm -hmm. I was so overwhelmed with the details. Uh, my mm -hmm. instinct was to pause and hold off. And mm -hmm. so thank you for saying, okay, I think that we should probably have some discussion. And what we came up with was that at this point, FNA sees no reason why we should change the parking fee, the two-hour zones, um, or the hours of current enforcement. We would recommend that there is consistent with what we're doing now, one day or one week, and that people can call as they always have, or now utilize the new software and do that online. And that this would be temporary until we could all be included Mm -hmm. in a comprehensive, collaborative process that gleans information not only from the parking study data, but from multiple stakeholders, 
in a community. So in the interim, would I be free? Yes. Yeah, it you, would say you said status no changes, quo. So. But right, I'm not trying right. to be, right now the status quo is you call up mm -hmm. and Sean says, sorry, there's nothing I can do. Okay, so the status quo, right. and I'm not, I'm just, yeah. I'm not trying to pick at you, I'm just yeah, trying to make sure we understand. understand. Right. What we're going back to is we're taking what we did eight months ago and institutionalizing it temporarily right. while we come up with a larger policy. Correct. Okay. okay. Yes. Good. Thank you for the question. What was, if I called up before, how long did my visitors um, stay on the list? Typically, whatever they requested, oftentimes it might have been a month, but typically we accommodated what persons wanted. Okay. They would sort of but we would, their we would set an expiration date. Can, can, we, can we do that within some kind of range or limit? Sure. Can we do that? Can we continue to do it the same way for now? We should define the length of the permit. Do yeah. it within some limits, maybe, you know. So you can have buckets. So Matt, Matt explained we can set any of those limits. So what we had said one day, one week, I mean, yeah. ah, correct me if I'm wrong, it, it can be whatever It might we want. be simpler since this is viewed as an interim, maintain the previous status quo well, while we engage the community in a, bit, in a broader discussion. Mm -hmm. it, residential permits are free and they last a week. Is that what it was, though? I'm just saying, I mean, it, it just simplifies what, what it. it, 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 it so why not just continue to do what people ask for? Because it's software-based now. Yeah. So, you have, to so, so you, have, you have to define a parameter. Well, so, so what if we mean seven The parameter weeks? is a week, or it's okay. two weeks, or my, yeah, my, yeah. my, my sister's going to be here for a month? Right. We could do that, or yeah, just a week, or you can be generous and say, a month. I don't think so. I think we should just, we need to pick, we need to pick a value so that the office can control it. That's right. The mayor has if I may, um, it would be, it would benefit a, a lot of members of the public who have long-term caregivers mm -hmm. should not have to call every, every week or every month. Right. Um, if you're caring for so someone in hospice or even a, a kid or an older parent, it's it's kind of onerous or burdensome to have to call every week, every week. to right. renew this thing. Yes. So right. so if we can uh, give a time frame where people can do it for a longer time frame, you know, it takes that burden off. Them. So, so could we? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, a day, a week, a month. Well, that's what I'm saying. Uh, right. One month yeah. is. And I'm, I'm sorry. When yeah. you say buckets, like when someone calls, that means that they can pick. So that the that's the menu options. Whatever. Okay. There has okay. to be menu so options. We have to give them options. That has to give them the one who knows how the software right. works. He's yes. not. <laughs> He's not. So, so we can, there's three options. <laughs> no, there could be a so, thousand. So I live at X Y Z address. I have a visitor for two weeks. Oh, you'd be in our month long visitor list. What's so your day, week, month? Day, week, month. Right. Okay. Awesome. I think that's and I think right. that's reasonable okay. to say if you have someone coming every day for you once a month, that you can now do online okay. because you have the option to right. call it in, or, or you, you can, can do, do the other online. Thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, um, could I suggest it, it? So we only have three options. Well, we can have as many as oh, you want. Right. Can we have a, a day, a week, a month, and uh, either a three-month option or a six-month option? Can we do something like that? I, I wouldn't go with that right now. Okay. If there's an intention within three months. For six months of doing this, otherwise, you could have everyone come in and get okay. six months. For All right, free. okay, gotcha. Oh, that's a good point, John. <laughs> All right, All right. <laughs> right. Okay. right. I had one other question, which is okay. uh, so let me let me tell you that right, the, the fee will be zero. Mm -hmm. You, as a resident, will have the option mm -hmm. to call, or go online, yep. right. Uh, <coughs> Will you have to provide some proof of residency? There will be validation. Yep. There will be some validation that you are who you say you are. <laughs> and then um, you would provide a license plate number. Mm -hmm. And then that is the vehicle that would be permitted. Uh, is there a limit to the number of permits that one person might apply for? No, because that's set by the ordinance and it is limitless right. for residential. And it is currently right. limitless. So if I was going to have a Saturday brunch party at my house with 40 guests in a two-hour zone, mm -hmm. yes, Michelle. Your neighbors aren't going to like you. <laughs> they, don't like they you already don't like you. So. <laughs> the permit just like set by the ordinance? Is that set by the, the ordinance or set no, by no. the resolution? You said it would, you said any a limit on the number of permits that could be acquired by a resident would be set by yeah, the ordinance right. or the resolution? The ordinance. Okay, we'll there, see. There, there, is, is, there is no, none. but there is none. There is That's none. what he's saying. You could, but there is none currently. Right, but you need a new ordinance. You're saying you couldn't put it in the resolution. This is temporary. Is anyone going to ask for thirty permits? I mean, 
Well, 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 slow, well, slow down. Well, Let's yeah, answer one question at a time. Yeah, Mine discuss, is that. My right? discussion answer is Michelle's just, question. It, only because this was the only, I mean, we passed the ordinance, so mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's a done deal. But that's been my question about having an ordinance that's that broad mm -hmm. that I think doesn't address a lot of the more specific uses is can we do those things through a resolution? Will we be able to, through resolution, pass a policy that says X number of permits? You're so that's, that's a John answer. answer. Yeah, I think permits. To, to, to have a cap such as that, it probably would be better to do it by an ordinance. Now, by resolution, you could say after the third, the, the price is increased. For okay. example, so you could okay. try that. You can control that. So you wouldn't need price to increase. Increase. Yeah. Yeah. You could make it a million dollars, and then you sort of <laughs> solved your problem. May I offer a suggestion? Yes. So I just have an idea for these very unusual events that you know you decide you're going to have ten people over, forty people over, whatever it is. Have we really become so institutionalized as a borough that a small place, forty, three hundred residents, have we become so institutionalized that? that a borough resident still can't just call up the phone and ask the police department or the chief of police like, and say, I'm going to have 40 people over Saturday. I want you to know, do you think you could just <coughs> let the, the officers know that I'm having 40 people over on the street mm -hmm. and to, you know, to, to be appropriate? I think in Lower Marion Township, even, if you're going to have a party like that, yeah. the police will come out and put a no parking <laughs> sign on your street. You know? I mean, so there's got to be some informal accommodation, I think, unless we're going to be so... Well, I think Orthodox. that's Aaron's point. Right? Yeah. Aaron, that, it was not my yeah. point. I, I'm going to give Mr. Morley the credit. Well, this was his question. And to, can I ask the follow-up question with that? So, per the signs in the current practice, enforcement is Monday through Saturday, 8 to 6. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I just ask, do we ever enforce two-hour zones on a Saturday? Because that changes the reality of are you going to have a party? And if so, in the resolution, can we change mm -hmm. this Monday through Friday, eight to six? Changing the, right now, the, if the ordinance has a time set, we right. won't be able so to change that time. The resolution can't contradict the ordinance. ordinance right? And that's in the ordinance. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's in the ordinance. Okay, so not then, the resolution. Okay, so then go back to my question of have we, do we have any data to demonstrate how many tickets have been written on Saturdays for residential so two-hour I, I can't say it's never been enforced. Um, I, I can say it's not regularly enforced, but it's not, I can't say it's never been enforced. Okay. So it's although I'm not an expert, and I've seen a lot of information about tickets, it is my own novice opinion to say <laughs> that I doubt very seriously that strict enforcement has ever been provided um, in my term being at this table and the data that I've seen, I do not believe that strict enforcement has occurred and, and those in time you mentioned. Well, I ask because in 14 years in a two-hour zone, mm -hmm. we entertain a lot. We've never on a Saturday That's right. had a ticket nor have I ever called anything in on a Saturday. So, I, what I, so I, 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 if I may, uh, oh, sorry. No, go, if, go I, if I may, if somebody is to have a, a big event on a Saturday, give me a call. Give me a call, <laughs> set, let me know, and we'll, we'll do what we can to accommodate you. So, should sure, sure. They should invite and they you. Should. Okay. Mm -hmm. Free cake. Yeah. 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 Out for the diabetic. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, Mr. Walco and then Michelle. No, just to, again as a point of clarification, maybe for the public as well, that this is what we've been discussing is for the residential invitees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there is a fee, Mr. Metric, for owners or leases. Correct. And that is already set in the ordinance to last for a calendar year. Mm -hmm. What is that fee currently? Currently, if someone is coming in with a new we're needing a new sticker, they got a new car, they're a new resident, we, we are charging a $5 fee. We're also um, using the um, existing parking permit. So if you got a parking permit in 2016 and you paid the dollar for it in 2016 and that red sticker is still on your car, you're still good until further notice. So unless Further notice will probably happen sometime towards the end of this so, year. So keep that car, this is an incentive for <laughs> years. Absolutely. Yeah. So this resolution could change that uh, fee for owners or leases if you wanted it to. But right now we have not addressed that issue, so that would stay in place. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to get back to Box Point, mm -hmm. which is, you know, I, I would like our residents who are watching and those in attendance to understand 
there was a system put in place, there were rules put in place, they weren't put in place legally, they were sort of put in place verbally. Um, and when you really dig into them, it gets really complicated really fast. And the way that it was dealt with previously was maybe by not asking too many questions. And everybody seemed happy. And the job of everyone at this table is to dig in and ask those difficult questions so that we have laws that apply equally to everybody. And it doesn't matter if it's my party, or if it's Mr. Morley's party, or whomever, or that one street gets more enforcement than another street, mm -hmm. it's done equally to everybody because we're all paying the same taxes, mm -hmm. right? right? And it's ugly because there's so many conversations here. Mm -hmm. I don't want people to have the impression that we are just sort of scatterbrained or don't know what we're doing. There's a system in place, but when you really dig into it, does it fit our community? Mm -hmm. Maybe it doesn't. And that's the conversation we're going to be having over a number of months. Mm -hmm. Cycling back, the conversation we're having at this table is what are we going to do tonight? Mm -hmm. Mr. McGreevy. Uh, so, yeah, I just want to underscore that this is a temporary fix. Mm -hmm. You know, we're trying to attend to a small piece of the puzzle, and we're going to return to the whole puzzle mm -hmm. later. Um, and also, I mean, Maybe this is just for my immediate neighbors, but I live on the 100 block of Marion where we're, we're not permitted, you know? And so this is only applying to the two hour zone. So the 200 block of Marion, this applies to, but 300 block, it doesn't, you know? So it, there's some streets where one block of this, this would apply and another block, it doesn't. And we have the map on the borough website, um, thanks to Matt. So um, just to clarify that. Okay. So right now, the motion on the table, and then I'll get back to John. Two things. Go oh, John echo, first. And to echo that, since I'm not the elected official here, maybe I can make clear mm -hmm. that, so if you do set up a fee that's established a fee, you don't want that to be considered we're raising the parking fees because you've meant it already to be temporary. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So hopefully everyone remembers that by that time. Uh, the second thing is, just to make sure, again, for the public's knowledge, this is only for residential invitees, which have to be visitors, invitees, or guests of an owner or leasee of a residential dwelling. So someone who is running a commercial business or someone who is routinely visiting something for commercial purposes for commercial business cannot, get a, a, cannot take advantage of this uh, permit. Okay. So just to summarize what I believe is on the table right now. Mm -hmm. For owner leases with their visitor, residential visitors, mm -hmm. an owner leasee can apply for an unlimited number of permits. The fee per permit is zero dollars. They can supply a license plate and say whether they would like it to be in effect for one day, one week, or one month. Mm -hmm. Are there any other criteria that I missed? This can be done by phone or by email. It can be done by phone, in person, or online. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Phone would have to be by borough hours or during borough hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those are the criteria. All right. Any further discussion on sort of that as it is? And, and the reason I say that is we could get into parking policy forever because we're recognizing this is a temporary fix. Is this something that we're ready to adopt as, as is, or do we need further discussion on this tonight? All right. I'm going to... I'm going to go for the question. Yeah. Uh, all in favor of adopting the residential parking permit resolution as I outlined, say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That Thank is approved. You. The uh, takeaway from all that for the public is everything is the way you believe it was yesterday. President Muir, can I just make one comment? Please. I, mean, I think it's positive. I hope it is. Um, a couple months ago, I made the decision to jump off of social media. Um, but I had a couple neighbors, because apparently this parking issue got really hot on Facebook and the Narbert groups, and a couple neighbors brought it to my attention. And I guess I would just say to, uh, to our constituents to just be careful, you know, I'm not going to discourage social media use, but just because it's on Facebook doesn't mean it's accurate. And I think there's a lot of, of information out there um, in social media that isn't always presented in a manner that becomes constructive to municipal government. Um, you know, I got 
maybe 30 emails at least in the past two days about this. And I don't always agree with everyone here about what we do, but look, seven people came together and we did the right thing and it was a good outcome. And I got 30 or 40 people writing telling me not to do this because no one knew what we were gonna do. And I'm not blaming anybody <laughs> at all. I'm just saying, just because it's on Facebook, just you know, have to scrutinize it just a little bit. So that's it. All right, thank you. We'll move to 7J. Uh, which is not on the agenda yet, so I need a motion to amend the agenda to add 7J. Also move. Bridge matters. <laughs> oh, I so move. All right, is there a second? I'll second. All proof of uh, amending the agenda? Aye. 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 All right. Um, I need a motion to uh, consider the traffic engineer evaluation regarding the North Narberth Avenue Bridge. I'll make a motion to consider the traffic engineer evaluation regarding the North Bridge. I'm All right, there's a second. All right, so on the table, uh, has it, uh, I know this came in real late. Yeah. Has, that, has anybody seen it? No. no. Talk to us. Have a later. Later. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Metric, the floor is yours. I don't have it. Thank you. Oh, wait. Yeah? Okay. Turn your attention to the... We need an engineer at Woodside Avenue coming into the... Okay, Mr. Morley, public comment is closed. We're going to discuss the bridge right now. Thank you. We call your attention to this uh, memo that's uh, from me to council and the mayor regarding Narberth Avenue Bridge dated today. Does everyone have a copy of it? Mm -hmm. the table? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. I apologize. No, no, no problem. Um, it's a summary of what's happened since, you know, the last, uh, about the last three or four weeks. Um, and I'm going to walk through it give you some options for, for going forward, and hopefully, I guess by bringing this up yeah. under action items, there'll be some consideration and, and, for and the council mm -hmm. can, can consider. Okay. Um, the bridge obviously is currently closed to vehicle traffic and open to pedestrians. That was a decision the council made as a result of um, the sidewalks being closed on either side of the bridge and observing the fact that cars and people were walking across the bridge on the cartway and that that was unsafe. So uh, council decided to close the bridge to vehicular traffic, keeping it open for pedestrians and bikes. And that's how it's remained up until today. <coughs> uh, the uh, inspection team from PennDOT, which is required to do regular um, inspections of the bridge because it's in bad condition and they need to go look at it regularly, they finally completed their overdue uh, inspection and they did it on the week of April 22nd. Now we'll get that full detailed report from them in several months, but we were on the phone talking to them about the initial results. And the initial results, uh, first of all, is that the load rating is gonna remain unchanged for the bridge. It's gonna stay at nine tons, which is not a lot. It means you can basically have two passenger cars going over the bridge at the same time and basically no trucks, no dump trucks, no, nothing with a load can go over that bridge right now. It's not used by our fire equipment or, or it shouldn't be used by any trucks. Let us know if you see any trucks going over it. They would be subject to a very big fine. Um, the, that inspection team communicated to our borough engineer the condition of the supporting structures that hold up the sidewalks on the eastern and western, the, the, the inbound and outbound sides of the bridge where persons are, had, had been walking for many years. And um, the borough engineer took that information, looked, did their own inspection, reviewed some past documents, and recommended two approaches to repairing the sidewalks. Now I'm talking about the existing timber sidewalks that are outside of the cartway, kind of, hang, not really hang off, but, but kind of, ex, ex, they're hanging over dear life right now, but are on the, on the edges, of the outside edges of the bridge. Uh, the borough engineer recommends that the western sidewalk, that's the one that's on the train station side of the bridge, uh, be partially removed. That's in bad condition, it needs to go, and they want to incorporate that work as part of the vertical shielding, mm -hmm. which I'm not gonna discuss anymore tonight other than to say, we're working on that, we'll have an estimate to you ASAP. And uh, as, one, as an option, the uh, borough engineer says you can repair the eastern sidewalk, which is the one that faces, it's on the Philadelphia side of the bridge, the inbound side of the bridge. There's two options, you can replace the sidewalk, 
which is a total removal replacement of all the steel structure and timbers, and that's going to cost anywhere from three hundred fifty to four hundred seventy-five thousand dollars to do that job. The other option is to do a modified repair of that sidewalk on the on the inbound side of the bridge. That's the removal and replacement of all the timber and repairs to those steel structures that are holding it up beneath. That's a little cheaper, but still kind of a, a steep one hundred to one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollar. Both of these, either of these options, we need to be publicly bid. It'd be difficult to implement. It would take months. They're expensive. And anywhere from 20% to a third of the cost that uh, the engineer quoted the borough is tied up in Amtrak's fees. Mm -hmm. If you do any work in the Amtrak right of way, you have to hire an Amtrak crew mm -hmm. there to be there at all times to manage uh, train <laughs> traffic and to keep this site, site safe. And that adds a tremendous amount of cost to any kind of project you're going to do in a rail, active railway. So keep that see in mind. Concurrent with that, we look, We asked our traffic engineer, and that's on the back page, to evaluate uh, the possibility of reopening the bridge to both vehicular and pedestrian traffic, but to do so in a safe manner. And what they got back to us on, we had a, we had a few back and forth with the traffic engineer, but they decided and concurred that a one-way northbound traffic movement that's going into the borough uh, with a pedestrian pathway on the western edge of the cartway, the side of the cartway that is closest to the train station, is feasible, can be done safely, uh, would require signage on the um, Narberth Avenue, both uh, south of the bridge, north of the bridge, uh, would require there be barriers put in place on the bridge to protect pedestrians and, and protect cars from pedestrians, Pedestrians from the cars, excuse me. Not the other way around. <laughs> Depends who's my car time. <laughs> Some kid hit my car. <laughs> uh, the preferred protection method is is not feasible because it weighs too much. <laughs> so a jersey barrier, one jersey, 10 foot jersey barrier weighs two tons mm -hmm. and the bridge is, oh, no, and they're 10 feet long mm -hmm. and the bridge is 110 feet long, do the math. Yeah, no. <laughs> it can only support nine tons. So there are some alternate um, protection features that the traffic engineer is investigating and presenting a menu of options to us. So that's why the cost estimate has some variability in it. We don't know where we're going to end up. Um, but we think uh, our best estimate at this point is that the cost to implement that signs, uh, pavement markings, and barrier on the bridge is five to $10,000. So here we are at our, our decision point, and I'll just run through the decisions, uh, our options. Option one is kind of where we're at today, which is close the bridge to vehicles in both directions, open it to pedestrians, and implement a signage plan. And that signage plan would have to extend pretty far back down South Narbeth Avenue to direct a detour around, to let people know the bridge is out, to let people know where our downtown is. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty extensive menu of signs that we'd have to purchase and put in place, which we hadn't done yet because we knew there were still some variables. And why buy signs if you're not going to need them? But we're pretty comfortable we can implement that in less than one month fully. So that's a pretty quick implementation for it. It's a matter of figuring out what we need, ordering it, getting it in-house, setting it up, and um, we can definitely get that done in 30 days. Option two is to open the bridge to vehicles in both directions and close it to pedestrians. Now that's the condition we had in place when we found out the inbound sidewalk was no good to be walking on either, and that was the objectionable condition the council identified because we were observing uh, people walking across the bridge and dodging cars, and that didn't that didn't look safe. And persons weren't going to go out of their way to use the tunnel uh, to get across uh, to the north side, the tunnel that goes under the septa station. Okay. That is kind of the cheapest solution because to implement that all we have to do is divert pedestrian traffic so we we think that'll be even less than a thousand dollars to do the signage that we need to do and we could definitely do that in less than one one month to fully implement it uh, option three which i'll go over quickly because i don't i can't imagine you want to do this but it would be to open the not to prejudice the conversation but to open the bridge <laughs> Open the bridge to vehicles in both directions and repair or replace that inbound sidewalk. And that's, that's going to be difficult to implement, take several months, and cost a ton of money, anywhere from 110 to half a million dollars just to do the sidewalk. And then the bridge itself would be torn down 
not too long after that sidewalk was completed. And the fourth option is the traffic engineer option, open the bridge to vehicles northbound, open it to pedestrians, and implement the sign and safety plan. We think that could cost anywhere from five to 10,000. We could implement that in less than one month. Um, if you choose to do that, I already have a meeting on our calendar for ne early next week with the traffic engineer to uh, work out the plan. Um, we will need to, your traffic engineering, um, even though it uses the word engineer, is, is a little bit art and a little bit of science. So it's always a good idea when you implement traffic engineering changes to observe the conditions and effects and monitor and adjust. So there will be, there will be eyes and, 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 and observations and if we need to make any adjustments to how things are working on the bridge, we'll, we, we will do that. Those are... Um, your four options. Okay. So, at this, I, I see some interest from the public, but unfortunately, public comment has closed. But if you can, if you can write down your question, I will see if I can integrate it into this conversation. This is that that See, Mr. Walk over to the rescue. Like John gets paid. <laughs> All right, I'm going to uh, I'm going to pause here and I'm going to open this to public comment. Since it wasn't originally on the agenda. Thank you for solving the problem. Yes. My Could you state your name and address? Jennifer Clark, and I'm at 410 Conway. Thank My you. question is, why can't we open it and do southbound to lessen all the gridlock? at the bottom of Haverford when the cars are all trying to go through the tunnel because it is crazy at certain times of the day. This way, if you have a southbound lane out, at least you can divert some of the traffic out that way as well. Okay. And then pedestrian, of course. Okay, yes, sir. I would recommend AM and PM. AM from the movie over, over the bridge, because that's the traffic needs that parking. PM, opposite. Mm -hmm. Okay, noted. Any other public comment on this bridge matter? Yes, sir. The businesses want it from south to north. And they are uh, unanimous in that opinion, those who have express there. Uh, nothing's ever unanimous. The, the, members, <laughs> the members of the business association who have commented have asked that it be from the south side to the north side to bring the business over the bridge. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Can I just thank you that the bridge inspection came after Woodside Avenue opened again? Because prior to that, we on Woodside Avenue couldn't go over the bridge and couldn't get out of Woodside. So by opening Woodside, putting in that traffic light, you made life simpler for us. Okay, good. All right, any other public comment on this matter? All right, now, this is your last chance, Mr. Bush. Yeah, okay. I just want to strongly urge that you maintain the pedestrian pathway. Noted, thank you. Yes. All right. All right, now I will close public comment uh, regarding the bridge matter. I will come back to council, and Mr. McGreevy had his hand up thank first. You. So I, I wanted to thank you, Sean, for laying out the options and also can you remind us what is the plan for the long-term bridge construction in terms of pedestrian crossing? Is there a plan for a temporary pedestrian yes. bridge or is it, are we just limited to the tunnel? Um, there will not be a temporary pedestrian bridge, but there will be temporary pedestrian pathways across the, uh, across. In other words, <coughs> we've, we've engineered it in a way where pedestrian access will be maintained but it'll be staged in different locations as the bridge is demolished and rebuilt. Mm -hmm. okay. So the pedestrian access, imagine, imagine the bridge in three pieces. <laughs> pedestrian access will be on the far side while this side's demoed. Oh, okay. And then this side will be demoed, bridge. this side will be rebuilt, and then pedestrian access will move to that side, oh, and pedestrian oh, no. access will move to the so middle. So there will always be pedestrian yes. access mm -hmm. during the construction period? Yes. Okay, because I was... Uh, um, and that's going to save us some cost because we took the temporary ped bridge out because um, it's expensive. Okay. It added time and about two hundred fifty thousand dollars to the project. We didn't, and it wasn't necessary, and it wasn't going to make anything on that bridge completely fully ADA compliant either. The slopes. 
Well, but that's, ADA compliant. that's helpful because I was thinking if we need to invest in the tunnel, you know, during the bridge construction, we could just do that now, you know, for pedestrian crossing. But but no, but we don't need to do that right. because we have this. Tunnel. No, no, it's acceptable. <laughs> so, oh. yeah. Yeah. so, oh, okay. I'm sorry, Bob. <laughs> no, I just, if it would serve the council, I'd like to make a motion so that we could discuss mm -hmm. the options. Yes. Okay. Uh, I mean, I would move that we that we adopt number four, open the bridge to vehicles northbound. I have questions. questions. Can we do that after we have it? Just while we're let's go around one time, so oh, okay, and then we will sort of choose one of these options, and then we'll have see what has the votes, and we can discuss it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, Cindy, I just want to underscore. I went to the NBA, and the conversation at that time of those present was that this is really critical that the bridge open up. <laughs> So I would recommend that, if at all possible, we follow that southbound to northbound so customers could come <coughs> into town. I, I, would, and, and I would note that the traffic engineer only has a recommendation for that, and it may not be safe to do it the other way also. So That's correct. <laughs> There's Is that, that the reason? So that no, they, they, they did, they they that did the point record. out the direction, the direction being yeah. um, um, northbound. Can, can we ask? Yeah, is there a reason that the engineer did not suggest an option five, which would be opening the bridge to vehicles southbound while keeping it open to pedestrians? Because it was less preferred than doing it northbound. From a safety perspective Correct. of the pedestrians mm -hmm. and the vehicles. Thank you. So that okay. it's on the right. Okay. okay. So that was kind so, of my so question. Can we, yeah. I mean, is it slightly more safe? Is it not safe to do it southbound? I mean, what's the, if you had to pick a way, I think northbound safer, or uh, I'm wondering if we could get some more information on that, or if you can clarify that. I can't right now. Okay. That's what we've got in the room tonight. Councilor Tabla Moffat and then the mayor. I have to reframe my question. Can you come back to yep. me? I'm sorry. Yes, mayor. You asked um, I, I too was at the business association meeting when uh, the businesses said, uh, you know, they are really feeling the effects of this bridge being closed, and they will when it goes down, but to the extent we can minimize their, their discomfort. In addition, I have heard from a, a number of business owners who were not at that meeting who have approached me. Uh, mm -hmm. in, on the street, in my uh, in my store, in different areas, and uh, it was additional comments from different businesses saying they wanted uh, coming with that. Okay, Councilor Tablema. Here's my question. So option two says, open the bridge to vehicles in both directions, close the bridge to pedestrians, and implement a signage plan. While I enjoy signs, what does it really need for people who have strollers? Or are in wheelchairs? What are we really talking about? Because under the tunnel's great, but we know it's like nine steps down and seven steps up, so how do we... Yeah, there wouldn't be any wheeled access. <coughs> there would be no wheeled access. Except going to the... Yeah, you'd have to go yeah, to the right. Yeah, you'd have to go yeah, out to the yeah. road. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> you know? We can cross our new bridge there. I'll move it there. But, well, sorry. We answered that question when we decided to keep the bridge closed. Yeah. No, no, I just, I want to be sure that we're being clear yeah. about the step business. Mr. That's Nixon? all. Oh, um, yeah, I, I, I was one of two dissenting votes on closing the bridge, and that's okay. You know, reasonable people can disagree about outcomes. Um, having paid attention to you all for the past few months, I think that there'll be a large consensus for option four, mm -hmm. and I will be willing to go along and vote for that. Okay. Um, Councilor Pananopoulos? I'll wait for the motion. All right. So, Bob, would you like to... Uh, we sort of have on the table, hold on, John's. Okay. I think we're, I think you're about to get the same question. I'm sorry, I think, it's, I think it's really important for a number of reasons for us to do southbound to northbound. So, what is the process that, that is, that's what we're saying? That's what no, no, no. So, for. Isn't the business no. issues asking for northbound? They are asking for southbound to northbound. Yeah, they're asking right. for northbound. Right. No, they're asking no. for northbound. Can you clarify no. what Ed, the business From South Narberth to North Narberth, Ed? That's what the business yeah. owners who commented yeah. asked. Yeah. Yeah. This is what they want. Which yes. way am I yes. Which what, what, Let me clarify. clarify. What, what the proposal for option four is, is what? The business owners have asked for From through the NBA and privately down. through emails and etc. Okay. Um, going, 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 going northbound. <laughs> northbound. <laughs> Eastern Lincoln's come from the gas. Okay. All right. I got it. 
So I'd like to make, I'd make, make a motion that we open the bridge to vehicles northbound, open to pedestrians, implement sign and safety plan. Uh, for a cost not to exceed, we want to just throw up a For a cost not to exceed $10,000. And then we can we implement can we this as quickly as possible. As quickly yeah. as possible. Yeah. Can, we, can we hasten Thank the you. work? 12,005. 12,005. To be completed and as quickly as possible. That's expeditious. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So, That's so right. for a cost not That's to right. exceed 12,500 <laughs> to be implemented as soon as possible. All right, is there a second? Second. second. All right. Who's so I'm just going to write down someone's name. All right. All right. Any further discussion of the motion that is currently on the table? Hearing none. All in favor of opening the bridge to vehicles northbound with pedestrian access, implementing signs, safety plan at a cost not to exceed $12,500 as quickly as possible, say aye. 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 <laughs> Let's see now. All right. Get her down. Get her down. Okay. I need a compass. <laughs> it's because it's on your outsider. If you're outside, you know. Uh, it's the same yeah. All right, we'll move to A. Um, a. Mr. Manager, do you have a report? Um, I have. I have some brief comments. I don't have. A, I don't have a large report tonight, and I don't have a large uh, amount to say about our capital planning process. But I want to keep that. With that idea of milling and churning, we are going to be meeting internally next week and the week after. And my expectation on June 5th is to present to you a draft plan that can be published, that we can go out, we can get public comment on in our June cycle, and we can uh, vote to adopt either in June or July if you prefer. Um, it's worth noting in the memo I <coughs> gave to you tonight that uh, it reiterates some of the projects that. Uh, didn't get completed in the 1819 cycle and are getting pushed into the next year's cycle if you want to do that. There are also some emergent projects, projects that have emerged out of a need since the last time we did a capital plan. That's the vertical shielding on the Narworth Avenue Bridge. We have the LED streetlight replacement project we've been talking about. And we have the borough's match for the bike infrastructure, um, downtown municipal bike parking and the other amenities. Those three items are kind of new things. I will make this comment, though, about my first look at um, 1920, where we're at, how 1819 went. Um, 1819 went really well, but if you keep, keep in mind that we had two very important um, leadership <laughs> staff positions that were filled by people right around that time in that year, and we we're still... those John Gallagher and, and Ed Harmon are... are, are, are um, um, you know, we've, we've broken them in, right? There's there's some creases in the glove. It feels good now. You can, you don't drop the ball when you catch it. It's all it's all worked in. They've been here a little while. They know how things are going. They know what the departmental needs are. So I think we're going we're going to have a more capacity to execute projects. But I see us if we were just to take what's on our CIP that we passed last year for 1920 and add these new projects to it, it's too ambitious and it's too expensive. So I'm going to be looking for ways to, to prioritize those things. And those, those, a lot of those building uh, improvement items were, came from the facilities and grounds assessment were identified as number one priority items. Maybe there are things that just get pushed out into the next cycle. We're just going to have to make that kind of, those kinds of uh, decisions. And it's also uh, important from now until the presentation on the 5th that uh, if council members have any items or ideas or, or they want to make sure something is being addressed through this process, if even, if, even if it's specific to a certain project or it's specific to certain kinds of projects, hey, Gigi could say, hey, Sean, what are we doing? <clears throat> what are we doing for Narberth Park in this next year cycle? Mm -hmm. We can make sure that that conversation gets woven back into the conversations that are having at the staff level okay. so that when we come to you on June 5th, there's something that we've, we've spent some of our time thinking about that and trying to come up with some, um, um, some solutions. So there's been conversations too. I just want to address the, um, since I brought up Narberth Park, there is money budgeted in this year's fiscal cycle for improvements. We've contemplated doing some uh, um, replacement and, and heightening of the uh, nets that are along Haverford Avenue. We've got a better quote from that. I'll, I'll talk to everyone about that on the 5th, 
and maybe we can come to some decision about what we want to do with those dollars that we've budgeted from, from last year. And we'll have some other, 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 there are some other needs that we've identified in the park that you'll, that you'll want to consider and, um, and um, you'll, want to, you'll want to consider the cost of, of that, uh, that improvement too, because it's pretty substantial. So that's all I have to say about the capital improvement plan at this point. We're going to have a lot more to talk about when we get back together on June 5th. But if you don't mind, I'd like to make a little announcement to, to council members. Um, as you know, um, uh, Charlie Bode retired, and uh, we're going to uh, gather uh, in, in the very near future on a Friday and um, have some lunch. And we're going to well, let everyone know on council uh, to come and attend in the park. But we're going to also um, close the offices that day and have a work day in the park. So the administration, uh, public works, and, and John Gallagher's in the room, and Mayor Andrew Deutsch, anybody on the police uh, side of the side of the table who wants to join, we're going to uh, tackle a few uh, improvement projects in our park. Uh, we're going to get a good work, good good day of work out in the sun, out of the office. It'll be it'll be on a Friday morning after our infrastructure meeting and I'll send out uh, invitations to everyone here at the table and, and we invite you all to come join us and stick around for some some hoagies and and uh, and, and water we'll get a vegetarian option this time DG That's right, thank sorry you. about that is it, is it from you is it bio, bring your own hammer is it <laughs> right. No, I'm, I'm watching Ed's face. I think there's an arsenal, hidden arsenal of torture. Unleash <laughs> on some of He's our staff that's used to working indoors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good for you. <laughs> so so I, hope, I hope if you have time in your schedule and, and desire in your heart, you will join us. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Solicitor? Uh, just one update, and I commented on this uh, a few weeks or months ago about the property maintenance code that's been enacted and how the borough has been able to take advantage of that and how what a great job Ed Harmon from Public Works, Kevin Walsh from Criminal Enforcement and Sean and Matt from Borough Office have been doing in order to respond to complaints and issues of safety generally um, or general habitability that impacts the residents of the borough. Uh, one of those things, again, as Mayor Deutsch referenced earlier today about landscaping or bushes coming over the sidewalks and how um, that if you as council or the public has issues that need to be addressed, it's odd to think of it, but now we have a very good mechanism to address those. Um, I hope uh, Ed doesn't mind me saying that because I hope I don't overwork him on that, but um, just how... how I think efficient and uh, the, the change, uh, a positive change I've seen since has been in place. Um, just updating on updating council on that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, monthly reports have been filed. Any comments for the good of council? I. Um, you said it. Uh, Chief John Gallagher will be in our service uh, one year on the 20th, I believe, this month. So thank 21st. you. 21st. 21st. I misspoke. The 21st. So happy anniversary and thank you for your service and commitment to the borough. Thank you. I very appreciate much. that. Uh, I want to thank Ed Harmon again and everybody in the office and everyone who worked so hard on Earth Day and to make the Save by Park plant sale and cleanup extremely successful. To your credit, everything went smoothly and really hugely successful. So thank you all for that. Um, the next thing is, Mayor, I have a question. The Memorial Day Parade, any info? Uh, so I just talked to Mr. Nardi today. Okay. Uh, who, and he's getting it organized. Uh, he just uh, had a brief meeting with me today. So I think it's on as usual, as scheduled. Um, I don't have times. Okay. Uh, as soon as I have, I, I will push them Okay. Mary, right. I believe it's uh, 9.30. Oh, it's 9.30. Yeah. Okay. All right. 9.30. There you go. Um, I'd like to report uh, an unfortunate passing of a longtime number of volunteer, Kathy Rennick. Uh, volunteer for more than 20 years with the 4th of July Committee. Helped out with a lot of different things. You may recognize her in her later years on her red scooter. Um, passed unexpectedly oh. earlier this week. So. Letting everyone know, thank you for your contribution to our community for all those years. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and President you Mutic, I had to, yes. just two comments under the good of counsel, if I may. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I just want to congratulate the Uppercut Gym. I'm not a member, but apparently they recently raised a substantial amount of money for a local charity 
uh, a cancer charity. That's a gym here in Arbor. Okay. So kudos to the Uppercut Gym. And the St. Margaret's Parish Peace and Justice Committee mm -hmm. um, recently held its most successful ever um, free trade product sale. And we're trying to encourage more people from outside of just the parish to participate. So look for that um, around the borough at least twice a year. It's free trade products that are organic and they pay their farmers a living wage and they're produced in a sustainable manner and the coffee is delicious. Thank you. Okay, anything else? All right, uh, any new business? Any old business? I'm just gonna uh, say at our next working meeting, I anticipate rolling out um, sort of a framework for a parking plan. Right? This is something the office has been working on. Um, and you know, how is council gonna get involved? How is the public gonna get involved? What are the next steps gonna be? Uh, I'll be formulating that. I have some ideas, a number of different options. I'm very interested in hearing your opinion, council members, and also uh, members of the public. Um, if, uh, if there's a strong public desire to really get into the weeds, you know, I would like to know about it. So in the next two weeks. <laughs> Sorry? We'll have something for us to discuss at the next workshop meeting about the communication plan. And the communication plan is coming also. Yes. And the capital plan. And the capital plan. It's going to be a planning meeting. All right. That's that's my old... Uh, I'll take a motion for a journal. So motion. Is there a second? Second. Before I call for the vote, is there any need for an executive session? No? All in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 Hasta la vista.